Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand everything that goes on in narcissistic relationships. So hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, let's go, and let's talk about closure. Closure after a narcissistic relationship. What is it, right? Is it even possible? Well, let me know if you are struggling with closure in the main comments, and we'll talk further. So let's get started, though, and talk about it. Closure is when both parties leaving a relationship or leaving a situation have a sense of finality, have a sense of ending, have a sense of understanding what went on. Both people take accountabilities that they need to take. They have discussion and they decide to part ways with a sense of understanding between each other. It's difficult to get to in any relationship when you have, are leaving a relationship, because obviously if you're leaving it, you're at the point of communication breakdown, right? And in a healthy communication breakdown, people are able to come back together after a period of time or sit with a counselor or sit with a friend or, 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 or someone, right? Or, or alone and say, hey, this is what I see happen. This is what I see happen. Okay, we aren't, this isn't working. This is really sad. Let's part ways. I get it, I get it, and it's over right? With a narcissist, you're going to get none of that. With a toxic person of any kind, you're going to get none of that. What you're going to get instead is blame shifting, silent treatment, smear campaigns, all of the above, right? And then some toxic, more toxic heaps of toxic and never accountability. You're going to have the urge to write them letters, to let them know what happened, to let them know your side of things, to let them know how you felt, to let them know what they did to you, to how they made you feel, what the relationship was to you, how many lies you feel have happened, that what they did was not okay, that, you know, all of it, right? You're going to have the urge to want this closure. Most people have this desire for closure. You can't get it from a toxic person. You can get other kinds of closure. You can redefine what closure is for you, but you can't get that from them. Why? Because they don't take accountability, because they don't have enough empathy to care what you're actually feeling. They know you're feeling it, but they don't care, right? They only care what it looks like for them. So if they're put under pressure, in front of people, they might give an ounce of this, but the second you're alone, or they'll do it underhandedly or, or backhandedly, like, I'm sorry, you feel that way type of thing. I'm sorry, you made me do that. I'm, so, You know, those aren't real apologies. That's not real accountability. So because they don't take accountability and because they don't really care with, with empathy from a place of empathy, it isn't possible. It just isn't possible because it takes both people being able to empathize in the moment with the other person to offer the closure to the other person. And I don't know, does that make sense? It's not possible with someone, one person doing that and the other person not. You may even try going into it like, okay, I'll be nice. I will tell them the things that I did wrong. I will tell them the, the ways I was, you know, not great in this relationship. I will take my my accountability and i will show them that i see it i will apologize i will do all these things not to get back together but to give offer them closure and see if i get it back oh no all you'll get is yeah you were that way uh-huh at least you can see now you're not going to get an offering back or if you do guaranteed hoover because what will happen then is you'll end up back together if they offer you the closure that you're looking for, right? If they offer back to you what sounds like accountability and later you realize isn't even remotely accountability. And if you end up either together or talking or trying to remain friends within weeks, days, hours, usually those three, usually not longer, they will start their toxic nonsense again. They will start doing the very thing that they claim to be accountable for. Do people make mistakes? Sure. Do people need to make the mistake in order to learn, in order to heal, in order to grow? Yes. This isn't what that is. What that is, is now you know what I'm admitting I do and you take it because I already told you it's what I do. And if you're with me, clearly, you know what it is. Why should I have to change? I'm a toxic person, right? Like that is how they're thinking. They're not thinking I'm a toxic person, but they're thinking, I told you I was that way and you're the one who decided to stay. 
they it, it diminishes you in the relationship once things have ended and they hoover and you take them back for whatever reason or you stay friends with them it diminishes where you are because now they know you know what they are and yet you're still there and to them that looks like it's your choice it looks like you're saying that's fine with me be that way it's and, and they won't give you closure you're not going to get it in the way you need so what can you do I think what we can do, like a, a major thing that we can do for ourselves, go back to a video a couple days ago about allowance and acceptance. It is acceptance and allowance that that person is what they are. They are how they are. They are who they are, and they are not going to change. It is seeing them as they are that gives you enough space to create the closure for yourself. We have to do it within ourselves. We have to think for both people. Does that make sense? Like we always have with them, right? But really, you have to think for both both of you. You have to go, okay, this is what I contributed. I got reactive. I got angry. I did this. I did that. Right. It was because of that. And we know this. It was because of the way I was treated. I was being, you know, the gaslighting and the projecting alone was burying me under. Okay. And that's fine. And I don't wish to be that way in a healthy relationship. So I need to now heal my reactivity to things, not to toxic people, to things. And I need to set boundaries so that toxic people can't get in. And I need to, so you see, you find ways to heal yourself for the ways, for the things that you don't wish to continue in other relationships. And then when you look at them, you have to see it almost as if you're doing it for them because that's what they make us do, right? For everything emotional, we have to do it for them. And you see it for them like, okay, they were toxic gaslighting people who were cheating and, you know, not nice. And you have to think, oh, that is who they are. That's how they operate. That's how they function in relationships. That's how they get along with people. They control, they belittle, they diminish. Wait a minute. It's so it's understanding all of these traits of what a narcissistic or toxic person is and how they behave that can help you work your way toward closure. It's not going to be an interpersonal closure. It's going to be a personal closure. One you create for yourself by the understanding, the awareness and the allowance that that person is who they are. And you did nothing you did or could do or would do or will do will change who they are. All right. And it's in it's not in allowing toxic things to happen to you. It's in recognizing that toxic things did happen to you and that that came from a person who was supposed to be loving, kind partner or family member or mother, father, whatever, and recognizing that that person doesn't have the capability to be a healthy human being in relationship and separating from that. The closure has to come from within for yourself. So there are things you can do, like you can write letters to the person and tear them up because frankly, the tearing up is basically saying, I know you're not gonna read this anyway, but this was important for me to say. And I said it to the only person and the only person it matters to, which is myself. And I put it on paper so I could see it. And I reread it and then I shredded it because you know what? You don't deserve my words to the toxic person. There's one way. You can do all sorts of things to create closure for yourself. So if you're not able to get past it, sometimes talking to a person, talking to a coach, talking to a therapist, talking to a friend can help you get the validation, see where you're stuck, right? In, in needing something back from the other person. The thing is with closure, it's needing something from the toxic person. And we need to get to the place where we need nothing from them. And that is the closure itself. With that, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Any questions, any comments, please leave them. Bye-bye.